I would not say older again, but my teammates, you know, <laughs> it's experience, <laughs> experience, yeah, experience, experience teammates. What up, EuroLeague fans? Welcome to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hine. Today, we have a very, very special guest, um, one of the up and coming, you know, young stars. I, in my opinion, he's a star already um, in EuroLeague. Um, Real Madrid's own Dejan Musa. Musa, man, what's up, man? How's everything? What's going on, bro? Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Now, first of all, um, you know, this is your, I guess you could say your first complete, you know, season of your league, you know, starting out. So, you know, what are your early impressions of, of your league basketball so far? It's an unbelievable feeling, you know, to, to be – uh, to compete with the best with the best players in Europe and, and, and in the world, quite so. Uh, it's 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 really really special feeling every every night to come out and to perform in front of the fans around the Europe, you know, uh, in s- such a great cities. But the uh, competitiveness of Euroleague, I, I was a little bit surprised how how big it was. You have to prepare yourself on another level. So it's 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 quite challenging but but i'm hoping that uh, i will continue to to be prepared like i was i was up until now now for me you know you're you're only 23 years old but it feel like you've been around you know for a long yeah. time in, in in europe you know with your with all your your stardom in, in the youth basketball and you know being in the in the nba um at a young age but to me you play with such maturity um you don't play like the average 23 year old so where did you get that sense of maturity from on the court First of all, appreciate it on, on the words, bro. Uh, and the second of all, you know, it's just being around the teammates who, who have experience. Uh, you know, when I was 16, I had a, around me, I had a, in Cedavito, when we were playing your league, I had a James White around me. I had yeah. a Harry Walker, Jacob Pullen. All of those guys helped me a lot to, to mature before before the time and to realize what kind of game we're in, what kind of game we play. Uh, and then second of year, I had uh, Demetrius Nichols with with me, so that's mm-hmm. another another guy who helped me a lot in 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 my maturity of understanding the basketball more. You know yeah. how to prepare yourself, how to recover good. So all all of those guys, you know, I, I like to listen a lot. I like to learn from the other other teammates. I will not say older teammates, but like <laughs> you know, <laughs> other other teammates. I'm trying to you know every day to learn some new stuff, and especially right now when I have these these incredible guys around me you know it's it's very it's very easy to to play mature basketball yeah no, so speaking of you know mature teammates you know you have you know Sergio Yule, Chacho <laughs> and Rudy Fernandez who are you know have legendary figures in, in not only your league basketball Definitely. but European basketball so you know what have you you learned from them you know both on and off the basketball court as I said before like we're here Big family, you know, and, and they welcomed me, Mario, and, and Pete when we came. Like, they, they welcomed us like we were part of the family for 10 years. And that's that's a special feeling that you have to have, you know, that connection with, with the teammates, with the coaching staff. And for me, the most important thing that they showed us is to how how to be a Real Madrid player, you know. All yeah. three of them, like, it's 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 big pressure, of course, but it's it's unbelievable feeling to wear the, the white jersey every every night that you're playing in front of the fans and, and you know it's it's something that that will stick around me even even when they when they finish with, with the basketball something that uh, you know in the first previous days like when we came to the to the preseason uh the the the, the type of energy that they had it's it, it was unbelievable you know when they I will not say older again, but my teammates, you know, <laughs> it's experience, they, experience. Yeah, experienced, experienced teammates came on the on on the first practices and they showed like first of all maturity, then uh, energy, defense, everything. Like they were talking a lot, so that's something that sticks with me a lot. You know, the the respect that I have for them, it's 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 off the charts. I'm curious about you know your the locker room and, and you kind of getting to know the guys. You know, in Madrid. <laughs> You know, one of the things that you guys have there, you have a, a eclectic group of guys from all different types of cultures. You know, you already mentioned Mario. You already mentioned, you know, the Spanish guys. You have the group of, you know, with uh, Yabasele and Cousin, mm-hmm. the French guys, and, you know, Tavares and, and the Americans. So, you know, what what kind of, like, you know, sense and what kind of feel do you guys, relationship do you guys have, you know, in the locker room, knowing that you guys from all over, you know, different places, you know, the world? 
you you already know how it's in, in locker rooms. You know, there's yeah. a lot of joking around going around. You know, so it's uh, you know we're joking around from one culture to the other. Yeah, we're trying to learn some uh, you know stuff from from the different cultures, like the languages. I will not uh, say what I learned, but like <laughs> it's uh, already kind of you know you know what I learned. But like it's yeah. it's it's unbelievable when you have uh, good guys around you. You know, yeah. you, you all have like good persons. So that, for me, that's what's most important, you know, that you have to rely on your teammates all, all in and vice versa. You know, they can, they can rely on us too, on the new guys. So that's that's something that is special here. You know, you, you can call whatever, you can call whoever the player you want in, in, in 12 o'clock at night, you know, and they will they will be able to help you. Not just on court, but off the court, we're, we're a big family. So I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm very surprised by the by the welcome we got mm-hmm. and, uh, and, I was I was expecting like oh that's that's because we just came and this that but I'm here already for four or five months and that hasn't changed so it's something special here. That's definitely that's definitely special. Now you you talked about culture and I want to talk more a little more about your culture. You know your home country is uh, is Bosnia and you know even at a young age you know you have done so much you know for your home city and for your hometown. So talk about you know why is that important for you to kind of give back. Um, and inspire, you know, the next generation of, of basketball players, the next Musa behind you. Why is that so important for you? It's it's unbelievably important for me. You know, I, I even I even wanted to to do some camps like starting this year in my country just to show the guys that I'm that I'm with them, that I want to show them the the path that they have to go to to succeed. You know, not all of us will succeed, of course. You know that yeah. you have to have luck, you have to have uh, something from the gods, you know, put in, in your way. But like it's it's is the thing that even though we're from small country, I had adversity during my during my career a lot. Like going from the from my hometown at the age of eleven, leaving mm-hmm. my parents, leaving my brother, family, all of all of me behind just for the basketball. I, I risked that life of childhood and everything to to become a professional basketball player. And you know, I, I wanted to show the guys and the kids right now that that you have to sacrifice if you want to you know reach your goals, of course. And that you can succeed from from such a small country. Before me, you had a uh, Mirza Taledovic, you had a uh, yeah. Yusuf Nurkic, Rao, you had Mirza Delibasic. You have all of those players, but like the, this new generation of, of media and stuff, you know, you already know in social media and stuff, yeah. they were better like to be at home and or scrolling Instagram, TikTok, or something <laughs> like that, you know, than, than to be out out there practicing. Let me you know. let me find out you let me find out you doing TikTok dances uh, at the time home sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, that's that, that's not gonna happen, but yeah, uh, you know that, that that's something that I want to show the guys that if you want to yeah. if you want to succeed, you gotta put in the work. You know, you gotta disconnect from the from the you know all of those stuff that that's that are distracting you if you want to succeed in in, in the basketball in your life, general. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's definitely important, man. I think that's it's definitely something special that you do. Like I said, I've seen you build, you know, basketball courts and different things like that, man. So to be, you know, at such a young age, and like I said, I think you're one of the most mature, you know, basketball players, both one of all the courts that I've met. So, I mean, that's definitely something special, and I encourage you to appreciate keep doing that. that. Thank you. Now, the last two questions before we go into the, uh, our quick one-minute cl- uh, clench time seven. Um, you know, you played for Real Madrid is one of the biggest clubs in the whole entire world. Everywhere you go, from anywhere it walks in the world, you know, people know about Real Madrid. So what does that mean, you know, for you to, you know, to wear those colors, you know, every single day to represent, you know, such a prestigious club like Real Madrid? As I said, you know, my path wasn't wasn't perfect all along the way. Yeah. But like I feel I feel for myself and for my family that the reward was was waiting for me to for me to play in Real Madrid and to have such a big role, you know. For me that's one of the most most amazing things that happened me happened to me in, in my career. Uh something that it's that is very special around this club is when you come to the when you come to the practice facility, when you come to everything around the club, it's so well organized. It's uh you know, you have from the cooking staff to the coaching mm-hmm. staff to the locker rooms to everything. The guys are, are are making sure that we that we feel like you okay, you only have to play basketball, everything else we will take care of. Mm-hmm. So you know, when you come to, into that environment and you have this, this, you know, logo on your chest, it's it's hard not to give 100% every time you, you're on practice or, or in a game. So it's, as I said, it's amazing feeling wearing this and to have walking around in Madrid and, and the people recognizing you, you know, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's unbelievable feeling, really. 
Now you you were a part of, even though you didn't um, play as much, you know, part of the Ephes, you know, EuroLeague championship. Yeah. And I'm sure when you walk into Madrid, you see the EuroLeague titles and, you know, the EuroLeague trophies and, you know, some of the members on your team have won EuroLeague. For you, you know, being that you were, you know, part of, you know, kind of witness to what Ephes went through and then now being part of a, this type of club in Madrid, what would it mean for you personally to win a EuroLeague title? Um, that, that's the primary goal, you know, that's the primary goal of every player. But for me, especially like because, uh, you know, as I said, from the path that I went through and the all ups and downs and stuff that I'm finally stable somewhere. And I feel like that's 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 my primary goal. And, I'm, and I will do everything is, it, that's in my power to help the team, of course, to win, to win the early. But uh, as we said in Madrid here, going step by step, game by game and the, and the titles will come. That's that's our that's our goal. In, in this season, and we're talking a lot about that in the, on the practices and the games. But like, as I said, it's, it's the primary goal that it would be dreams come true for me. Definitely, definitely, man. I definitely wish you wish you a lot of luck in that, man. I think uh, the way your career has been going so far, man, you definitely have uh, a bright path and you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, future of lifting many titles and many trophies in your future coming soon. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Now, let me give you some some short questions. You just give me your, your short answers, you know, one word, mm-hmm. a couple words as possible. Your go-to warm-up song, what is it? Oh, oh Bosno Behar Pro Behara. That's oh, one nice. uh, Bosnia song. <laughs> Bosnia song, nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your favorite pre-game meal? Uh, pasta with red sauce and, and chicken. Nice, nice, nice. That's kind of the go-to for uh, for everybody, right? The staple <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you Do don't you play have too around with that? No, no, not at all. And, uh, and also, the the dietitians, the people around us, don't allow us kind of the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Do you have any like pre-game superstitions or pre-game routines that you can share? Yeah, I always, I always uh, wear the right shoes first, and uh-huh. I step on the court with the right with the right leg. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Anything special that you keep in your locker? Oh, uh, I, I have something that, that my mom gave me in my, in, my, in, my, in my suitcase always. What shows are you currently watching when you're on the road? When I'm on the road, I just finished, I just finished Peaky Blinders. I nice. just finished that. And I'm starting, the new, I'm starting to look for the new, for the new show because, you know, how the, how the troops are in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to stay involved. <laughs> exactly, stay involved. Exactly. Yeah. Last question. What is your go-to game sneaker? Uh, right now, Donovan Mitchell's uh, issue four or five. I'm not sure, but like the new ones, it's yeah. they're, they're amazing. So I'm so I'm going with that. Nice, 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 man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you stepping in the quarter with me. Um, man, I wish you best of luck the rest of the season. I mean, you already know I'm a fan of yours. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for you, not only this season but in your future. So thank you so much for taking the time. Appreciate it, brother, for having me. You're such a legend, and, and, and it was it was really, really, really important for me to be here, and, and I'm and I'm glad that I was here. Thank you, thank you so much, Euroleague fans. Thank you for taking the time for watching. Make sure you check out future episodes of A Quarter with Kyle Hines coming very soon. Thank you. Take care.